People tend to think that stem cells are this brand new phenomena that landed on Mother Earth in the last few years, when in reality, the first successful stem cell transplant took place in 1968 at the University of Minnesota. By the 1980s, scientists had discovered stem cells in our own adipose tissue, our own fat. And within several years, they discovered it in every tissue in our body. New technologies showed great advancement in the use of autologous cells, or in other words, stem cells from our own bodies, but they consistently had the same drawback of being dependent on the patient's age and the, their health. As new technologies came into place, such as amniotic fluid, uh, they, had, they worked very well, although science later showed that there are little, if any, stem cells actually in amniotic fluid. The newest and latest technology are stem cells derived from the umbilical cord of live healthy birth babies. So in order to get in and talk about this, we need to make a few definitions on some things. So the classifications of stem cell transplants. You have an autograft or autologous cells, which are basically taken from your body, put back into your body. You have an allograft, similar to what was done in 1968, which is taken from another individual and put into your body. And you have a xenograft, which would be taken from another species and put into your body. That was done many years ago when the new heart valves came out before they had mechanical valves, so they would use a valve from a pig and put it into a human. So stem cells themselves have basically two minimum qualities. Number one, the cells are renewable. This means that they undergo mitosis every 28 hours for approximately 65 generations. If you do that math, if you get a stem cell therapy, those cells are gonna duplicate every day for approximately 76 days. The second minimum quality of a stem cell is their potency. Potency as defined in the stem cell world is the ability to differentiate into any different cell in the body. So how do they actually work? A lot of people think that it's just the stem cells are injected in the body and somehow magically they get to where they need to go. That's not the case. When the stem cells are injected into the body, they are attracted by paracrine signaling. Now paracrine signaling is a chemical signal that's given off by damaged cells and stem cells are attracted to that. So the stem cells will come up to this damaged cell, attach itself to a blood vessel next to the damaged cell and then become what's called a pericyte. And from that point, it will give trophic and nutritional support to that cell that's next to it. Another capacity or capability of the stem cell is their immunomodulary function. Immunomodulary is important, especially in autoimmune disorders. In about 80% of your autoimmune disorders, the T1 or pro-inflammatory cells are significantly elevated, while your T2 anti-inflammatory cells are in the basement and they're not functioning correctly. And stem cells have a great effect on that. Another major property is anti-inflammatory. Whenever we have musculoskeletal pro uh, trauma, the body will release inflammatory molecules such as interleukin 1, 2, and 12, tumor necrosis factor alpha, interferon gamma, and all of these are initiated by these pro-inflammatory T1 helper cells. What stem cells do in response to that is an anti-inflammatory response with multiple proteins and immunomodulary cytokines, including prostaglandin E2, tissue growth factor beta-2, hepatocyte growth factor, nitric oxide, interleukin-4, 6, and 10, and many, many, many more, which are the anti-inflammatory effects or the T2 helper cells. Another property of stem cells is anti-apoptotic. Now, apoptosis means programmed cell death. Actually, it literally means cell suicide. When you have a cell that's either old or damaged, it will burst its cell wall and spit the DNA and commit suicide. New cells are produced afterwards. <clears throat> Take, for example, somebody who's had a stroke. There's a blood clot somewhere in a blood vessel in the brain. When that clot happens, all that tissue around that blood clot is not getting oxygen, so it becomes hypoxic. If you were to have stem cells in that area 
Within a reasonable time around that, these stem cells would then come to that area through paracrine signaling, attach itself to a blood vessel, give that cell trophic cytokine and growth factor support and put it back to its natural state so that that cell did not have to die and undergo apoptosis. So that's an example of an anti-apoptotic property of stem cells. Another major function which is under a lot of research right now is its antimicrobial effects. Stem cells have a native immune defense against microbial infections caused by multiple polypeptides. They think the active ingredient that really works the most in stem cells is a polypeptide known as LL37. There are currently many studies going on right now for acute and chronic infections. And as a, a note, they're also very effective against protozoa, which would be very important in Lyme disease. Now the first, next question that has to come to mind is safety. <clears throat> are these cells safe? Well, probably the godfather of stem cell therapy in the United States would be Dr. Arnold Kaplan from Case Western Reserve University. And here's what he says. Mesenchymal stem cells produce huge quantities of biomolecules, some of which are immunosuppressive. Mesenchymal stem cells put up a curtain of molecules around themselves that allows these donor cells to go virtually unnoticed into the body. They are considered immune privileged. While the body will naturally release such things as tumor necrosis factor alpha, which we talked about with the T1 cells, interferon gamma, interleukin-2, and all of those things from the T2s, the stem cells will release the adverse, which is the interleukin-4 and 10, coming from the T2 helper cells, making them virtually invisible to the body, and that's why they are termed as immune privileged. So there are many van advantages associated with using allogeneic stem cells or stem cells derived from the umbilical cord of a live healthy birth baby. Number one, anybody can be treated. No matter your age, no matter your health, no matter your physical condition, because these cells are immune privileged. There is no HLA matching necessary. When the stem cell is removed from the blood, you lose all of those HLA properties. Number two, they have the best anti-inflammatory activity known. Also, they have immense immune modulatory capacity and they have the ability to stimulate regeneration. They can also be administered multiple times in very consistent uniform doses at high cell counts. And this is really important because research is now showing that there are some guidelines for the numbers of cells that have to be put into a body in order to help treat any particular condition. <clears throat> in the very beginning of stem cell therapy, the question was always safety, safety, safety. That subject has now become passe because it has a very long track record of safety. The question now in stem cell therapy is dosing, frequency, and the mode of transmission. By mode, I mean, do you put it intravenous? Do you put it directly interarticular into the joint? Or do you possibly put it in the intrathecal space in the spine? Other advantages. They contain a huge supply of mesenchymal stem cells. Mesenchyme basically means tissue. So a mesenchymal stem cell is a stem cell that has the ability to create tissue. Another advantage is, is there no need to collect stem cells through invasive procedures, such as a liposuction or a bone marrow aspirate. These are basically off the shelf and ready to go. It's also important to note <clears throat> these cells have the ability to proliferate and differentiate more effective than other types of stem cells, and therefore they are considered to be more potent. And remember, potent in the world of stem cells means the ability to differentiate. If you were to look right now at a website called clinicaltrials.gov, you would see that there are more than 4,000 clinical studies going on throughout the world right now on stem cells. So stem cell regulation, a lot of people want to know, is it FDA, who controls it, what's the controlling that's going on? Here's the basis. Allogeneic stem cells from umbilical cord blood is regulated by the American Association of Tissue Banks. 
which means that all the cells are vigorously tested for disease according to tissue bank regulations. You are not allowed to expand these cells in your laboratory. What that means, remember we talked about the fact that that these cells duplicate every 28 hours. Well, as a laboratory, you are not allowed to duplicate these cells. And then our stem cell, it's simple because they can be shipped um, very simply, either in a dry ice or in a nutrient bait process. Uh, the, the FDA recently does have some guidelines associated with stem cells, and it's fairly simple. Most importantly, a stem cell can only be used for a homologous function in the body. That simply means that a stem cell can only be used for a function that it normally performs inside a body. We're talking about regrowth of tissue, bone, cartilage, blood vessels, nerve, and complete cellular generation. Thank mm -hmm. you.